Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the best settings to use with Zoom when you are hosting an online class. So there are a couple of key settings that you should um, change that are not automatically set, which would be really useful in terms of having students on the other side of the camera and their own computers at home. So if you go to zoom.us, and then my account, this is um, assuming you've already logged in and you've already um, got your account up and running, that if you go over on the left-hand side here, you can see settings. So if you look on settings, there's a whole bunch of different um, settings under the meeting tab in which you can go through and select. What I'll do is take you through the ones that I tend to use that I think are the best. And the advantage of doing it here is that you don't have to start it each time and choose the settings. You just start it and those settings have been saved. So if we go here, you can see host video, start meetings with host video on. I think this is very useful. And so I put that on. Um, participants video, start meetings with participant video on. I think this is important so you can have a look at who's in the class. Uh, I know that we're marking people absent or present online, whether we've seen them or not. So this would be useful, but note that participants can change this. They can turn off their cameras by themselves. Audio type here, I suggest you set computer audio um, that then allows it will always record and play back through your computer audio settings, whether that's uh, an external microphone or speakers or just the internal mic and speakers. You can cho choose um, join before host where you allow participants to join the meeting before you do. Now I put this on, I think this is useful because if students try and join and they can't, it's another reason not to be there. So if you just allow them to join, they're just there, ready to go when you join. Um, you can see here, use personal ID when scheduling, starting a meeting, um, require a password. Uh, I'm not, um, I don't think these are a big deal here. Um, in terms of this, if your students have that link and they're able to do it, if you have a problem where people are accessing it, that shouldn't be. Yes, you can set a password when you are scheduling a new meeting. Um, what I have got though is that embed password in meeting link for one click join. So essentially that when I create a new meeting, yes, it does have a password, but it is included in the meeting link. So when students click on that link, it's like they're also uh, entering that password as well. So that's pretty handy. If you look here, you've got mute participants upon entry. So this automatically mutes all participants when they join the meeting. I think this is good. And then you can choose whether they are unmuted. So you don't have that kind of chaos when you start of all that noise. Um, you can set reminders if that's useful for you. A couple of things that are in meeting. Um, allow meeting participants to send a message visible to all participants. Now you might want that on or off. I had a class this morning where they were just kind of chatting with themselves. So you might want to say, mm, I'm going to turn that off and then see how that goes. Um, you can allow private chat, sending private messages to another participant if you want. Um, that might be something that you would like to do. You can auto save the chats, play sound when participants leave, that kind of stuff. Um, you can file transfer, host participants can send files through the in-meeting chat and you can set the specified file types. I haven't had an issue with this so far, so I'll just leave it on in case I need to post some material, but you might also want to turn it off in case people are sending stuff to each other that maybe they shouldn't have. Um, here's an important part, if you scroll down a bit further, it says screen sharing. So it says allow hosts and participants to share their screen or content during meetings. So what I think is important is that you don't allow students to share their screens because, well, you just don't know, right? So what I would say is under screen sharing is you say who can share, host only, and just choose that. That means you're the only one that can share your screen. So this is a way of stopping them at least sharing the stuff that is on their screen. So here we see virtual background allow users to replace their background with any selected image. You might wanna turn that off and then they won't be able to update that background. Um, those are the key settings that I tend to use 
Um, those are the sort of, you can see it scrolls through all of these things here, but those are the key ones that I would use. I think it's really important that you get onto screen sharing and if it really annoys you about the virtual background stuff to go under here in meeting advanced and change it there as well. Okay, so hopefully this was useful in terms of setting up a Zoom meeting with uh, very useful settings when you're dealing with students. Any questions in the comments? Thanks for watching.